Hello and welcome back to this series on working with pandas in Python. Now, as always, this is part of my textbook on pandas, which you can find at pandas.pythonhumanities.com. And in this chapter, we're going to be talking about chapter six here, which is under advanced features of pandas. And our main concern in this video is being able to do some more advanced searching on specifically strings, so text-based data in a pandas data frame. And I'm going to also be kind of talking about why you want to kind of do this within pandas rather than converting pandas to maybe lists and doing searches that way. So let's go ahead and just kind of take a quick look at our data set. Uh, this is the one that we're already familiar with. It's the Titanic data set, and it's already loaded in here and printed off. And if we look at this, we can kind of go through and see some interesting things. We might notice that at specifically number index 886, we've got a person who has a name that includes the, the prefix rev or reverend. So me as a historian, I'm looking at that and I think to myself immediately, wow, that's kind of interesting. I wonder uh, how many reverends were on the Titanic and I want to kind of look at their names. I want to see a bit about them. What class were they in? Um, were they all male? Were some female? Uh, what were their ages, etc.? So I'm interested in kind of exploring this data more deeply and exploring a historical question here. So how might I do that? Well, let's first look at how you would do that outside of pandas and then look at how you would kind of recreate that exact same searching method within pandas and some of the advantages of that. So the first thing I would do is if I would first want to kind of grab all those names and convert them into a simple list. So I would do df.name. So grabbing the, the name column here by doing dot name. And likewise, you can also do the, the in brackets and do name that way. Uh, but we're going to do dot name because there's not a space here, so there's no need to do the brackets and index it like a list or like a dictionary. Now we're going to convert it to a list by saying to list, which we learned about in a previous video. So now that I've got all that data converted, let's go ahead and print it off. And we see that it's a very long set of names. I'm going to go ahead and comment this out just so I don't have to scroll all the way down. But you can kind of play with that and uncomment it out yourselves. But it's a list of everyone in this data set in the name column. So now what I want to do is I want to make a empty list, call it revs. These are going to be our reverends that we append to as we iterate over all of these names. So I can say for name and name. Names. And then what I could do is I can say if rev with a period is in name, then we can make a presumption that that specific string of characters is going to be a true positive for a reverend. So we can do revs.append name. And once we do that, we can print off revs and we get a uh, is in names. There we go. If rev is uh, oh, there we go, in name, there we go, and now it works. So what we have now are a list of all of the different reference that were on the Titanic. Now this is fantastic, I've got the answer that I was looking for, I know, I know who all these individuals were, but this only gets me so far to my really, my larger historical query, which requires knowing a bit more about these reverends. Now that I have these names, sure, I can go through and I can index that data frame at each of these individual names and extract all that data. But there's really not a need to do all of this. Pandas affords us a way to kind of search across all of our data in the data frame and still retain all of that other metadata. And by other metadata, I mean all of this other stuff that we find in other columns, passenger, class, uh, um, sex, age, etc. on down the list, ticket number. So let's go ahead and try to recreate this exact same search in one line of code within pandas and retain all of that metadata. So what we can do is we can use df.lock and that's going to allow us to, to search and grab a specific location that meets a set of criteria that we're going to indicate within these brackets. So the thing that we want to grab is the df.name column. And then we want to make sure is we want to make sure that that df.name let me make sure go ahead back here and I've got this just a little wrong. We're going to do df name this way. There we go. And we want to make sure that it is converted into a string that contains the specific string rev. So what we're saying here is that we're going to grab any location and we're going to grab all of those whose column name, the name column, contains the string reverend. And if we do this and we execute this, we now have all of that metadata retained. We've done the same search that we did up here, but we've done it in one line of code, which is usually good. But I always try to say that if you're going to put something in one line of code, it needs to have 
more than just the the aesthetic value. It needs to do something more than just look nice. And in this case, it really does. So in one line of code, we not only are able to do the same task, but retain all of this extra metadata, and most importantly, keep that data frame. So it outputs another data frame that is really just the search results that we care about. Now we can do some manual searching across this, and we see that we only have, what, six individuals that meet this criteria. We can now see that all of them are male. According to this data set, we see their ages here. So we can start doing some targeted analysis now on this subcluster within the data set. Let's go ahead now, though, and think about something else. What if I was interested in researching people who weren't reverends? So I, I really like the idea of searching for reverends as a historian, but let's say I'm interested in just excluding anyone who doesn't have that REV period in their name. I can do almost the exact same thing. I say df.lock. And this is where it changes just a little bit. That squiggly button that's above your tab on a traditional Windows PC that looks something like this that you really don't use too often unless you're doing some coding, this is what it's there for. So we can do something like this. And what that's going to say is that we're looking for something that does not meet the following criteria. So we're looking for something that is not in the name, in the name column, is not a string that contains rev. So we're looking for the exact opposite now. And if we execute this, we now have everyone else in that data set that does not meet our criteria. So that's how you would kind of use a, 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 a the opposite search method using that squiggly mark. So let's go ahead and scroll down now. Let's, let's do another kind of advanced search. Oftentimes when we're doing advanced searches in Pandas, we typically try to... Uh, try to do some other things that are regex based or a bit more complex. So let's take a first a look at how we would do it using a set of, of conditions. So we want to see if anything is either a reverend or contains the string MR period. So Mr. So we can do this with a uh, this upward mark like this, this upward slash. Let's go ahead and take a look at what it would look like. So we're going to do this exact same search that we did above. So DF lock. And I encourage you to, to write these out each time. Don't copy and paste because it lets you get kind of used to this more complex syntax. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to space this out a little bit so we can kind of see what's happening here a bit more easily. We're going to have two different arguments here are two different parameters. I'm going to put them both in separate parentheses. Eventually, you're going to get good enough where you can kind of just keep in, in your mind where you're at in the syntax. But I think when you're starting out, it's good to think of it this way. And between these two different con uh, conditions, we're going to put this or mark, this or upward symbol. So this is what the, the upward slash means here is or. So within this, we're going to say df name, just like we did before dot str dot contains and again within those parentheses now rev so we want to say if that so if this condition is true then return it as a match or if the other condition is true and the other condition within these other parentheses we're going to say df name dot str dot contains and we're going to put in our other condition which is mr period mister we can execute that and now we've got an output that includes both anyone who has Mr. in the name or anyone that has um, Reverend in the name. But we notice that there's a problem here, right? We notice that we are seeing things like this, MRS coming out. Why is that? Well, there's a reason for this. Right now, these periods are actually functioning as a very specific character, meaning anything else. So, uh, the period in these instances is more akin to regex, which will basically mean that we want to look for anything that is REV, and it can be followed by any other character. What we need to do here, and you can see this kind of output right here with MRS period, so this is not Mr. What we can do now, though, is we can add in a back out character, so the backward slash, which says that this is not any character. This period here means it is the actual period itself. And if we do this in both spots, it's not really necessary with Reverend as we saw before, but if we do this in both spots, we now notice that our rows have dropped down to the correct number of 523. And we notice that we have eliminated now any occurrence of MRS period from our data frame. So that's how you would use some kind of uh, the upward slash to have two conditions kind of being met. So let's go through and talk about regex a bit more and how we would specifically do regex searches to make this a little cleaner and a little shorter. So let's go ahead and scroll down to our next cell. Just like before, we're going to do df.lock and we're going to do that open bracket 
and we are going to specify what we want to search for right here. And just like before, we're going to do a search on the on the name area. And just like before, we're going to look for something that contains a set of strings. But unlike last time, this is where we're going to be a little bit different. We are going to use regex. So let's do re rev mister like this. This is a regex formula. And then we're going to specify, oh, and I need to comment these out. Then what we need to do is we need to specify that this is in fact a regex. So we're going to say regex is equal to true. And we get our result like so, 523 by 12. So this is a way that you can pass a regex search, which is a more advanced string matching technique across this data set. So that's one way that we can do that. Now you can also uh, change this a little bit more. Let's go ahead and in this case, I'm going to copy and paste this down just to save us a little bit of time. We can also pass in another keyword argument here. Case is equal to false. So we can pass in the false argument here. And what it's going to do is it's not going to look for any occurrence of rev or mister with a capital letter, rather any sequence of characters where MR or REV are occur. So we have the exact same results here because the sequence of characters really is going to be very uh, specific to these events. But let's look for any occurrence of maybe AL as a capital. And we can see kind of how this is different. Um, we do not see AL capitalized in this one at all. Rather, we see AL right here. This is because case is set to false. If we set it to true, we will only get instances where AL occurs with the A capitalized followed by an L lowercase. So that's how you can use these keyword arguments to really kind of, in one line of code, do much more advanced searching. I hope you've found this video useful for doing these kind of more advanced string searching on a pandas data frame. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to do some other advanced methods, such as uh, advanced filtering and querying within a pandas data frame. As always, I produce all the content on this channel free for everyone. If you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting it via Patreon or on my YouTube channel. You can click join in the bottom of this video and join the channel and support it that way. It helps keep this channel alive and free for everyone. As always, thank you to all of my supporters.